there's a few checks you can do on these phasers even while they're still on the vehicle with valve covers removed obviously and one of the first things you can do is check this tone wheel this trigger wheel and make sure it's not kicked way out and bent in there it should be pretty evenly spaced all the way around and you can see this one's fine and once it's off the car what you can do is in the inside here focus on the inside you see those three pins right there they like to come loose or wallow out and they have some looseness in here you get noise from that also the other thing that likes to happen is this pin right here actually locks it into the um, camshaft they can shear off on there your timing can be way off you have timing codes for sure with uh, that failure and I don't see that one too often and then the actual um, locking pin is inside of here that um, locks it at base timing when there's no oil pressure being fed to it uh, that's a totally different locking pin than that one there's one more thing I wanted to mention once you pull that valve cover off there's another check you can do uh, you should be able to see it if not turn your crankshaft so you can see it if you're trying to figure out any kind of timing issues whether it might be a trigger wheel issue or such or timings off for some reason you're getting timing codes um, once you got that valve cover off look for this middle timing peg right here you, see, you can see it's a horrible picture but you can see it at base stock timing and that pins locked this middle tooth right here should just about you know perfectly line up with the L so if it's not lined up and it's cocked off to the side here or over here then you know you have an internal phaser issue and you need to replace it also so that's another good check and it's easy visual once that valve cover is off besides all the rest of the checks I covered in the other part of the video and I just want to show you the inside here this backing plate comes off of it it actually holds all the pressure a couple screws and then here's the actual plunger and spring and this is that little locking pin that's making all that noise you can see it's a little worn out this one wasn't bad as far as uh, noise goes and that goes right in that little hole right there and that holds it right here at base timing if there's no oil pressure and if there's oil pressure it lifts off and the spring you know will force it down upon return but when there's oil pressure in here to start activating the VCT and move these veins it'll actually move over in advance or retard the timing and this will lift off so it's able to do that in the meantime at hot idle it's sitting here and there's no thick oil around it to quiet it and of course it's just sitting there as the cams are oscillating and it's uh, making noise unless there's a precise fit it's going to make noise and I don't recommend taking yours apart unless you're very careful to see this big spring right here it'll actually snap your finger pretty good so you just gotta watch it when you take let's see if we can show a little bit better with some light here I got the veins moving now they're like a little detent here and there's a like a thin metal plate there to quiet noise I imagine over beating against the housing and now that I got it advanced it's just a little hard to get it out of that initial you can see down the hole as you bring it back to base timing if I can do it okay let's see if we can do it you can see I just pop back into base timing there and that's where that pin locks down back into and then once it's allowed to advance, once you're driving, usually over 1200 RPM, it'll start moving and it can literally adjust the timing independent of what the actual timing is on the chain itself. But anyways, so yeah, it comes back and it pops into there and that locks it at base timing.